Good morning, everyone. This is Dan Hawkins with ThinkTech. Thank you so much for taking the time to join today's webinar. Um, we're going to be getting started here in uh, just a minute. I see that we still have some folks trickling in here, so uh, give us just a moment, and uh, we will go ahead and do some introductions and get started. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. For those of y'all who are just joining us, um, welcome to ThinkTech's webinar. Uh, the topic of today's webinar is leveraging the industrial IoT for digital transformation. I uh, want to thank you all for, for taking the time to join today's webinar. Uh, just a few housekeeping items before we do get started. Um, first, everyone's lines are muted on today's uh, call. Uh, we definitely do encourage you to, to ask questions and uh, submit feedback, so please don't hesitate to uh, do those through the chat functionality or the question functionality that's included with GoToMeeting. Uh, we'll be checking those throughout uh, today's session and addressing as many as we can uh, towards the end of today's call. Um, additionally, if the topics of our presentation today do resonate with you, we'd love to have a conversation and encourage you to visit our website at www.thingtech.com. Um, would love to schedule some time to meet with, uh, with you and one of our IoT and telematics experts um, and finally, today's webinar will be recorded and we'll be distributing a copy of today's presentation out to the group as well as publishing that to our website at a later date. Uh, so if you do have to drop early or um, have some other members of your organization that, that you want to bring up to speed, um, we'll be uh, sending out uh, copies of this webinar at a, at a little bit later, a little bit later this week. And like I mentioned, uh, also posting those for uh, public consumption um, next week as well. So. Again, thanks so much for joining us. Um, just to quickly introduce myself, my name is Dan Hawkins. I'm Director of Sales and Marketing here at ThingTech. Um, and again, today's topic is uh, uh, driving digital transformation with the industrial IoT. Uh, just a little background about ThingTech before we get talk started. So ThingTech is a Salesforce ISV partner that focuses on uh, the industrial IoT and providing a, a platform as a service to assist organizations really around the visualization, telematics, analytics, and reporting that helps provide additional business value based upon where things are, what they're doing, and how they're performing. Um, we focus really deeply on, on that side of the business, but we also focus really deeply on enterprise asset management, uh, specifically um, the total life cycle of your owned, operated, and managed assets. Um, today's session, we're really going to be specifically focused on on how the integration of these tools with Salesforce or your other mission critical business applications, such as your CRM, can really create dramatic business benefits, help to unlock additional efficiencies within your business, streamline operations, maybe even help you to identify additional revenue sources um, and, and really uh, help from a growth perspective. Um, so today we're, we're very happy to have, uh, to be joined by Tim Quinn, uh, who is the CEO and co-founder of ThingTech. Um, Tim is an engineer by background, but has spent over 25 years in the connected asset and mobility spaces. Um, today's Tim, Tim's presentation will be really focused primarily around uh, the, the high-level trends that are driving di digital transformation, um, but more importantly, the advantages of a CRM-driven telematics asset management and IoT platform approach um, we'll also share a couple customer case studies and really discuss how you uh, can also get started with, uh, with uh, leveraging um, this type of a digital transformation within your own organization. So without further ado, I'm going to turn things over to Tim, and uh, thank you so much for, for joining. <clears throat> thank you, Dan. Um, <clears throat> good morning, and um, welcome to, uh, I, should say, I should say good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the webinar. Today, uh, from a, a agenda perspective or topics we'll discuss, we'll try to touch on um, 
the industrial IoT and um, this the concept of Industry 4.0, which we'll kind of give some overview on. We also discussed why digital transformation, and we're really going to focus on some use cases and applied examples of where applying this type of technology, this type of solution platform uh, to operations really allow us to create uh, not just uh, digital transformation within an organization, but operational digital transformation, um, which is the blending of operations, IT, and other business units to really uh, create a, a very connected, uh, real-time, data-driven uh, support infrastructure. So, <clears throat> let's ask a real quick question. Why digital transformation? So, some of the things that we'll discuss and some of the topics um, and questions that often come up uh, with our customers is what is the role of the emerging digital organization in terms of um, how, what is the roadmap for your organization to begin a digital transformation process? Uh, maybe you're beginning that process, maybe you're thinking about that process, um, and maybe you're at the end of that process. But, um, you know, the other uh, questions we often ask, how can you leverage existing data without compromising security? Um, um, the platform, the, the discussion we'll have today <clears throat> really is going to focus on co connecting to a lot of different data sources, whether that's a connected device, a connected sensor, a mobile phone, whether it's connecting back to your ERP system, your CRM systems uh, via API. Um, there's a lot of data being aggregated and brought into a single platform. How do you make sure that we secure that properly and do the things that we need to to make sure that data stays with us? How can we ready our employees for Digitalization. This is a, a massive business process change, and uh, uh, user adoption and employee adoption is going to be critical. Uh, and then, how do you accelerate knowledge and use the data to accelerate to accelerate knowledge, automate business processes, engage uh, your customers, your vendors, your partners, um, and really improve, uh, um, really take advantage uh, of the data that's being captured to create actionable data, which we're going to focus a lot on actionable data. Uh, as well, and then of course, how do you scale that up? And I don't say future proof because it's almost an impossible term, but how do you anticipate uh, the, the the fast moving trends and new quote unquote things that are becoming available to uh, to uh, to the industry? Um, so when we look at the, I, the industrial IoT, um, and just kind of a quick you know summary. Um, you know, the plainest definition is industrial IoT is a network of physical objects, systems, platforms, and applications that contain embedded technology to communicate and share intelligence with each other, the external environment, and with people. So, so one of the things that we're, that are, we're seeing over the past few years is the adoption of um, the IoT or the industrial IoT is really accelerating, primarily around the uh, cost effectiveness, effectiveness of not just the devices and the sensors, but also the communication infrastructure um, and the middleware of the APIs allow us to connect to things uh, much more cost effectively, much easier, um, and, and at a much higher transactions. Um, the, the market is obviously quite big. Um, you can kind of see kind of the potential opportunity of what the size of this market is. So um, um, fast growing, and uh, really creating some massive disruptions within many different vertical, uh, vertical markets. Now, the fourth industrial revolution, or what was being discussed, uh, Industry 4.0, um, this is just a graphic. Um, um, as you can see, obviously, the first industrial revolution back in the you know, 1700s is where it started. Obviously, it moved to creation of assembly line. It create, you know, moved to you know, electronic and computer systems in you know, the 60s and the PC was really introduced. Now the fourth industrial revolution or uh, industry 4.0 is really a, a, a digitally connected world. Everything is connected. Everything's generating data. And that data can be used to solve real world operational problems as well as predict potential problems um, um, with things like your assets, your equipment, your infrastructure, your mobile workforce, or your field service uh, workforce, the amount of data that can be captured is massive. And as we're talking millions and millions and millions of transactions per minute, potentially. Um, what do you do with the data? How do you process that data? How do you put rules on that data? 
um, to actually generate actions and give uh, new insights that you may have not had access to in the past. <clears throat> Some trends and priorities that I want to briefly mention, mention and this is from a uh, source from the IoT magazine, but um, just an, a, an idea of what are some of the um, higher priorities or trends based on a survey that's conducted uh, to companies that were implementing uh, or had implementing or in the process of implementing a potential uh, IoT connected device, connected um, asset application. And the interesting piece, uh, the two highest ranked questions as you can see here, 45% extremely important and 34% uh, very important. So you can see, you know, uh, you know, there's a high, uh, high uh, urgency on things around predictive and prescriptive maintenance of machines or engines to assist in uh, managing those machines, managing those assets and equipment to do things like improve useful life of the asset, uh, uh, monitor the health, predict potential health failures or diagnostic failures. Um, so the, uh, this, this is quite interesting because of the, the second, uh, the second uh, priority or trend was the integration of customer marketing data. So what we're seeing is the uh, internet, I, uh, the internet, uh, the IOT um, and the physical maintenance management and operation of assets is extremely important but also integrating that data back to the customer, back to your vendors, uh, back to your stakeholders is the second highest priority. So, um, so now we can imagine that what if we can integrate the IoT or the industrial IoT with your Salesforce CRM, your sales cloud, your service cloud um, to a connector to give this real-time data some context around how it impacts your customers or your, uh, your partners. So I thought this was a very important statistic as it relates to the importance of creating connected customers. And that's really one of our goals is not just to create a connected asset, connected equipment, connected workforce, but also to create a more connected customer. So giving the data back that we're capturing, the insights that we're capturing, the rules that we're uh, identifying, any events that we're identifying, giving that back to your CRM or, or your ERP system is really a high priority from a, from a platform perspective. And you know, when we talk about predictive maintenance and kind of go into the number one, because we spend a lot of time on, you know, not just knowing what you own and operate from an asset management perspective, uh, and, and, you know, and things, of, you know, how do you manage your work orders, how do you manage your inspection processes, how do you manage uh, uh, your condition, uh, condition uh, assessment process, your maintenance, repair, and operations, your um, capital replacement planning, that's all very, very important. But how do we connect all your assets and equipment so we can start <clears throat> capturing uh, meter and uh, diagnostic and health data to start integrating that into a predictive maintenance model to um, assist you in extending the life cycle or uh, 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 minimizing or completely eliminating um, very costly asset failures out in the field. So, you know, identifying the potential problem via connected device, that's the first piece of the puzzle. The triaging of the problem is, is a rules-based engine of how do we triage it so that we understand what the problem is and then based on historical data or uh, um, the machine learning, how do we triage the problem to say, hey, here's what we need to do. So this may be the result of this triage or this rules-based engine, say, oh, we need to get needed parts. Do we have that in inventory? Do we need to go get that from a third-party vendor? Um, you know, do we need to source it? What do we need to do to get that part or to complete that workflow? And then we can do things like dispatch a field service technician. Okay, so identify the person that may be out in the field, they're close, they have time, their schedule permits them, they have the expertise to be able to maintain or inspect the, the issue. And then, and then go fix it with prescriptive maintenance and then right, close that issue and solve that problem before it uh, potentially happens. So that's, a, that's an interesting kind of workflow in terms of how we look at the problem. <clears throat> and then we kind of look at other things. Uh, so we look at the software piece, but we, I want to talk about some IoT type devices as well. So <clears throat> there's hundreds and hundreds of types of things, quote unquote things out in the world. And we tend to often, we, we tend to focus on uh, vehicles, uh, heavy, heavy vehicles, light duty vehicles, uh, uh, construction equipment, heavy equipment around construction, um, and industrial machines, 
as well as mobile devices and sensors or uh, sensor, sensors and or tags that are out in the world generating data. And now there's the physical connected device that can be um, procured and implemented on any of your assets or facilities or infrastructure. There's also communication uh, requirements to bring that data back in real time. It could be a Wi-Fi connection if it's in a facility or a hospital or uh, a manufacturing plant. It could be um, if we're looking at you know, sensors out in the world where we need hundreds or thousands of sensors to monitor uh, soil or temperature or structural integrity, you know, we may want to communicate over uh, a low power a wide area network to an IoT gateway to bring that data back to us in real time. There's also personal area networks that are connected uh, mobile devices to a cell tower so we can start capturing data via wearables or um, you know, um, smartphone uh, uh, applications so, and so forth. So the, the, the strategy and design of how you, what devices and sensors you connect to combined with what is the proper communication infrastructure or protocol is an often uh, a very important uh, discussion topic. And um, you know, then we kind of, if we kind of understand, kind of get a baseline of kind of where, where the industry 4.0 is, where the industrial IoT came out of. Now, let's, why are are people interested in this type of solution? When we look at our particular customers, you know, we 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 kind of come, we kind of wrap into this thing that we call a VAMP problem: visibility, accountability, measurability, performance. <clears throat> so our customers who are very asset intensive. And they also have a mobile workforce that operate or inspect or maintain that uh, those assets. They um, they struggle with this problem. You know, they lack real time insight. A lot of times, the data siloed. They have multiple applications that don't talk to each other. They a lot of times they have absolutely no idea what's going on out in the world once their assets or mobile workforce leave the uh, leave their offices. So we. You know, then aggregating that data from multiple sources, multiple devices, getting that data back into the enterprise so that um, your enterprise systems can um, take advantage of all this data that we're capturing is really a big challenge for our, for our customers. And then um, we see, um, as you would expect, um, customers really struggling to try to streamline operations, automate their business processes, move off of paper, um, get real-time performance metrics and benchmarks as it relates to their operations and their assets and their equipment and their mobile workforce. So we're, we're, our, our goal is to help our customers solve these particular problems. And then this is a different view of that problem. And as you can see, to the left is uh, the equipment that may be out in the world. To the rider the, is the VAMP problem. You know, visit, where are those things? How are they behaving? Are they where, are those things located or operating or being utilized um, um, in a proper fashion from an accountability perspective? How do I measure the performance of that data and kind of the uh, performance metrics and the benchmarks um, of that data in a real time, rules based uh, manner that if if Something happens out in the world that I don't want to have happen. Notify me, alert me, create me, create a case, and then create workflows around that to solve that problem, which would be the performance issue. Dispatch or assign someone to go resolve the issue. I connect to the machine directly, shut it down if it's, uh, if it's misbehaving. But these are the problems that uh, again our customers are facing. But if we can simply connect to those customers, put. Uh, devices installed on those uh, vehicles, whether it's a light duty vehicle, whether it's a heavy duty uh, truck or a piece of construction equipment connected to the uh, can, uh, the, um, the can connection on the on the vehicle, whether there's just potential sensors on that vehicle that we can capture data from, whether it's power takeoffs, whether it's um, uh, hydraulics, whether it's uh, refrigeration units, whatever it may be uh, implemented on 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 that vehicle. We also capture that data, capture data from a mobile device, issue work orders to a mobile device, do inspection forms on a mobile device. Whatever that may be, we can supplement that data very well, as well as you know, implementing things like IoT sensors and uh, asset tags, whether it's Bluetooth asset tags for small equipment, that know where that stuff is and make sure that it doesn't walk away, um, as well as to do things with, inside the building for uh, employee detection, um, collision avoidance, whatever that may be within the warehouse. So, and then, of course, you might have some non-powered assets, power generators, uh, 
uh, uh, cargo uh, containers, trailers, um, other things that may not have a direct power source, but uh, you need to know how that thing's behaving. Now, we, we talk about our Thingyak ecosystem. This is a, a schematic of how we view the world at a very, very high level with enterprise asset management, telematics and location-based services, obviously cellular infrastructure, sensor information, sensor data, message brokers or um, IoT uh, gateways that we uh, connect to, we have a field service staff that's out in the world operating the machines, operating the equipment, driving the vehicles. But we want to we want to know how they're behaving and what they're doing on a on a in, in a real time basis. And everything's connected back to the field, back to your enterprise via APIs. So we're in an API enabled world, and uh, our platform that we'll discuss is an API uh, uh, enabled uh, platform. So we we can speak to a lot of different things. We're device agnostic and we're communication agnostic, so we can mix and match different types of devices, sensors, and uh, um, um, mobile mobile devices um, through multiple communication methods. <clears throat> and I kind of, when I mean to kind of look at what we're connecting to, when you look at, at out in the world, you look at the edge. This is the the equipment or the machine that's out in the world. It has a device or a thing attached to it. It could be attached to a gateway. That gateway at the edge is intelligent. Uh, it allows us to connect and also allows us to secure the data so other people can't access it, which is a very important component of the solution as you start to research uh, your IoT or enterprise asset or fleet, uh, fleet management solutions. So when we, we connect at the edge, and instead of connect at the edge, we not only do the, the devices and machines at the edge uh, process the data, but they also can get smarter. So we connect the things and those things get smarter as they collect more data. If they become disconnected from the cloud, they can still operate and perform the job of uh, monitoring and managing the assets that it's uh, connected to. That data goes to the cloud. And so we go from the edge to the cloud and process the data where wireless gateway using micro, uh, various microservices to analyze the data. It's an API enabled uh, 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 middleware or service provider with managing the protocols. And again, security in the cloud is another very key component. And then this may connect back to other systems or integrate other systems for context like Salesforce or uh, open weather or ESRI GIS data, um, you name it, or even a, a various equipment and machine uh, equipment that, um, and vehicle manufacturers or OEMs connecting back to their APIs to bring that data in and then connect it into the enterprise. So it's, you know, what your users use, what your managers use, what a mobile workforce would use, executives, partners, and customers, and then connecting back to things like Salesforce, SAP, N4, whatever that may be, where, where we need to connect back into your enterprise systems from CRM to a um, ERP system. And really the final piece that we like to talk about is analytics. You know, what do we put, what type of data, what type of analytics we want to put on, on top of this data we're capturing? We want to put contextual data on top of it. So contextual data is simply blending other operational data sets into your real-time data streams from the edge to give it better context, whether it's um, uh, capturing data from the field and giving it context, say, to the current weather or the projected weather or predicted weather. Um, it could be predictive um, uh, data, and let's say uh, predictive taking data and predicting potential failures based on the historical data we've captured. We're, you know, these types of systems process thousands, thousands, not hundreds of thousands, to millions of records per minute. That data becomes extremely useful as we capture enough data to put uh, machine learning on it and then start doing things around predictive analytics as it relates to maintenance, as it relates to cost management, budget, ma budget management, field service, on-time performance, for instance. Uh, customer uh, uh, utilization information, uh, geospatial uh, data uh, uh, aggregation and, 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 and maintenance. So these are the, the types of analytics we like to talk about. And then if we get a little bit more detailed, it kind of goes down into kind of how, how we kind of look at it to actually solve that problem technically. Of course, we have a mobile app. Everything that we can do on the web console can be done via, uh, can be accessed on our mobile app. So we're very mobile enabled. Uh, our vision is that um, you should be able to run your business as it relates to your fleets, your assets, your equipment, your sensors from your phone anywhere in the world on any device. So 
we have a, a, obviously the, the API servers, an extensible object model. We have, this is where the API servers and the broadcast server reside. We integrate to third-party APIs. We build connectors to other devices and sensors and machines. We leverage some micro, uh, microservices to uh, do some very fast data processing, uh, very uh, big data-related uh, uh, activities, as well as rules-based engines. And then, obviously, connecting to things like trailers, vehicles, heavy equipment, cargo facilities, vending machines, other, other things out in the world is what we're maintaining and managing and bring that data back. So this is a very, kind of an important concept. Now, now what I want to talk about is, and that's kind of the academic, uh, or kind of academic portion of this, this webinar, but we'll start looking at you know, what does this really look like out in the real world and where is it being deployed where there's real value being, uh, being uh, generated. So here's just a, a, a kind of a visual of the types of customers that we would, uh, we deal with. So whether it's, uh, you know, needing asset visibility for uh, general service equipment that maintains and manages and supports, say, an aircraft, or if it's an equipment rental company or um, a, a construction company that has, you know, lots of different assets out in the world, whether it's a bulldozer, or caterpillar, um, a power generator, whatever that may be, that we need to be able to understand what this is. You have edge processing, so um, if this asset leaves and it gets dis disconnected from the world or disconnected from the internet or uh, the server, we still need to be able to control what's going on in this machine, you know, control the temperature, control the uh, humidity of the box, the ambient temperature, any other sensors on it. It still has to be able to be controlled and managed even if it's in a disconnected state. So edge processing is very important. We, that, we now create a intelligent, distributed, and autonomous network of assets that does not have to be connected back to a server to make a decision. It can make the decision out in the world, and it can continue to learn from the data it's collecting on the device itself. And then, of course, there's a mobile workforce. You know, um, op some of these operating the machines, operating the vehicles, uh, uh, working in the warehouse, uh, uh, do what they need to do. Obviously, how do we get the data back to them in a very effective fashion? So the solution, that uh, we've built, and it's gonna, uh, this, we're going to focus on our solution because it's the one that we know, of course. But um, this is our um, uh, uh, FinTech product suite where we uh, can manage all, all the data coming in from a visual visualization perspective, statistics for, so statistical perspective, graphing, and uh, uh, other visualization methods to generate actionable data and real time digital insight into your operations. This is what drives digital transformation. So obviously we have we have a we have an asset management component where we know everything that you own and operate, um, you know, um, the inventory, your condition, your asset classes, preventive maintenance schedules, your uh, corrective maintenance schedules, your inspection schedules, things of that nature. That these are now connected. All these things are now connected in real time through multiple types of devices and communication infrastructure. And now we can visualize literally any piece of data you want to visualize in an extremely fast, uh, fast way. Rules are put on top of this to, uh, and these are user-defined rules, uh, to define conditions and thresholds that you want to be, you want to monitor. And as that data is collected, workflows can be created to generate actions out in the world to deliver those actions to the users or to the, the people that need those. That could be your workforce, it could be your customers, it could be your partners but they would have access to the data that you need to have, have, that they need to have access to, that you let them have access to. So when we look at, you know, you know, fundamentally, you know, what is that problem solving? Of course, it's where are my things? What condition are they in? How are they performing from a health perspective, diagnostic perspective, and how can I deploy them more effectively and utilize them most effectively from a, a daily operational perspective? How can I create greater efficiency with not only my assets and my equipment, but also my mobile workforce. So those are the common things that we're trying to solve. And then, you know, this is, at the end of the day, what results were we getting, you know, monitor and manage in real time, maximize asset productivity, you know, reduce your maintenance costs, predict your maintenance costs, extend and improve life cycle, uh, your, the life of your assets, as well as the utilization of your assets. Um, 
automate your capital planning process, uh, predict your capital planning uh, uh, replacement schedules, um, move from paper to a digital world, um, have all the data that you need in front of you to make better decisions. And of course, streamline work processes. So one of our big focuses is to um, you know, you know, automate processes, of course, but how do we uh, connect the office to the field and make your things out in the field smart, smart, and ultimately make your, your company smarter? So these are the, the big focus. And to start looking at these cases, so uh, you know, for uh, fleet management or asset management, you know, things out in the world that are rolling or you need to understand where they are, this is a major use case for us. So in this case, we have very expensive uh, uh, suites of vehicles that have many different sensors and power takeoffs or PTOs installed on them. We want to know not just the location, we want to know the status of the not just the vehicle's engine, but also the PTO. So for instance, if I have to engage my PTO to put this light back in place, we want to know how long do they do it? Is it operational? How well is it being utilized? But we, we want to really automate this process through the location, um, health monitoring, geospatial visual, visualization, be able to dispatch or alert technicians out in the world and uh, uh, navigate them to that asset. And once they get to the asset, what we want to really uh, um, do is provide much more insight in how to resolve the issue whether it's schematics uh, uh, of the issue, whether it's a how-to document, whether it's technical specifications, whether it's a, a process or a checklist that we need to go through, that can all be delivered out to the field. Um, status of that uh, work order can be completed in an automated fa fashion based on geofencing technology. And we can get that data back to the, uh, back to the central uh, office or uh, back to the office in an uh, automated fashion. So, and this is a uh, very, uh, and also, by the way, you know, create a more connected customer. So I would assume that this house would want to know that this is this thing is, has failed and can you notify this particular owner that their power is out or that there's an a, a incident or issue in their backyard. That's just a, maybe a kind of a silly case study, but how can we create more connected customers with the data that we're, that we're, we're capturing? And how do we get that data back into a CRM ERP where those processes can then be executed based on uh, those particular systems? So we're aggregating and capturing and connecting and then giving that data back to the enterprise so better decisions can be made. You know, and we, we often do a lot of, um, uh, we do a lot of public sector work for quote unquote smarter cities. So, you know, whether it's, you know, connecting to facilities for energy management, street lights, traffic lights, uh, the public safety uh, departments, uh, putting sensors out in the world for air quality or capturing air quality based on, uh, you know, tiny, you know, tiny sensors out in the world. So, um, you know, the industrial IoT is the backbone <clears throat> and the foundation for any smart city, uh, smarter cities uh, uh, application. So, um, um, you know, real-time sensing, alerting, notifying customers or consumers, and again, connecting the customer. Going back to uh, the connected customer concept again, which we feel is a very important <clears throat> concept or um, um, component of any IoT solution or platform. I mean, you look at some um, um, case studies, you know, um, you know replacing or implementing um, uh, IoT devices and sensors on uh, thousands of vehicles in, say, state of Delaware, you know, to do improve things like emissions management, uh, emissions registration, um, uh, health information, diagnostic information, creating a connected customer in terms of what's out there, <clears throat> uh, really allows us to generate significant uh, operational efficiencies. In this case, over 11,000 hours were reduced simply by maintaining and managing our, our assets more effectively. And we look at uh, AB InBev or um, kind of one of their use cases and kind of their case study. You know, they were they were on a path, a uh, very strategic path on for digital transformation. They want to have a move into complete operational digital transformation across their entire business. But uh, in this particular case, use case, 
uh, revolve around fleet and asset management and inter enterprise asset management in a connected fashion, in a real-time connected fashion. So how do we, so in this particular case, we implemented our solution connected to multiple systems and things, brought that data back to really uh, improve and reduce maintenance costs by a significant amount. So 16.7% uh, reduction in labor and maintenance costs uh, in, in each and on an average across the, the enterprise deployment. So the, the, there's real tangible value and moving into the digital, moving into an operational digital transformation mode. And, and here's an example, you know, you know, how can create a more connected customers? So if we know where, our, know where our vendors are, we know where our customers are, we know where our things are in relation to where they should be from our, you know, from a navigation route perspective, how can we give that, that data back from an ETA and a tracking to make the customer more knowledgeable or the vendor more knowledge, knowledgeable or a stakeholder more knowledgeable about what is uh, happening operationally. And then this just gives you an example of, you know, kind of where things are, how are they performing, what are the things you're connected to, and then a before and after uh, uh, image of this is before digital transformation, this is after digital transformation. We now, now have real-time insight into any potential failures as it relates to the fleets or the assets or the quote-unquote things that we're connected to, whether it's tire management, fuel management, a GPS integration, sensor integration to say refrigeration units. So now we can easily see whatever's happening here, which is red, is not a good thing. That's generated now to make decisions and to improve that rather than let it continue to happen. And also then, and, and then you know, put some predictive uh, data on top of that as well. Just to give you a visual kind of what the, you know, what the end user sees um, is a series of you know what we call thing layers, and these are simple, these are defined, configurable layers of, of real-time data, and it could also have a historical component to it, or what we call time series data. And we know where things are, we know how it's behaving, but we have things that, that we can um, you know um, connect to, whether it's uh, show me any active diagnostic code that's going on now, show me where all my mobile workforce is located, show me uh, any potential, show me all the assets. Uh, that were speeding on a military base yesterday. Um, so you can use your imagination to start understanding what type of, how do I want to visualize this data and how do I want to report on this data? Again, in our type, this type of system and our, uh, our solution is capable of managing millions and millions of records on a, on a permanent basis from a scalability standpoint. But an important piece is how do we, 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 we do all that uh, data to pull out, you know, the small pieces of data that are really causing issues. That's the rules-based engine and the workflow tools and the workflow automation tools that really allow us to uh, really solve problems now and potentially predict uh, those failures from happening in the future uh, based on a predictive analytics model. Again, these are simply smart containers out in the world. Uh, now what we can see here is these are actually the the needles in the haystack that we were looking for. Okay, so we have this, and that's interesting, but really what I really want to get to is this. These two issues are severe issues that I need to resolve now, okay? <clears throat> Again, a different way to visualize the data. This is this fuel management, uh, these are fuel management charts. Again, these are user-defined configurable uh, at any on any layer, so this is, really give me insight is where am I, where's my in, inefficient uh, assets in terms of fuel consumption and um, display them to me in a way that I can easily understand it, okay? So and then, of course, if you want to, you know, integrate now, start to integrate not just the assets and equipment into your, into the platform. Now we want to start integrating work orders or jobs or tasks and assign those out to a field service team to, uh, to go resolve a problem, go inspect an asset, go uh, do something that needs to be done, now we have the ability to effectively uh, assign work orders, dispatch those field or sales service, uh, uh, sales and or service uh, technicians, uh, get them to the location via our mobile app, you know, route planning and navigation, and then give them the correct information of what they need to do once they're on, on that site, on that job, to complete the work order. Again, now we have full visibility and not just our 
our assets, but any issues going on, but now we have full visibility and a tightly integrated platform for your field service uh, uh, automation or optimization needs. We often talk about connectors, and we have these uh, in our platform, we have what's called ThingX connectors around many connectors for data import, many connectors for enterprise uh, uh, um, uh, integrations, many connectors for telematics or equipment OEM, man uh, OEM manufacturers, uh, and many for visualization. So as, as an example, weather would be a good one. Um, <clears throat> keep going down now. So these connectors aggregate the data, and now, now we the, have the ability to do some very strong re reporting and analysis on this data that we're capturing using some very um, easy to use and powerful uh, reporting and dashboarding tools. Every piece of data that we capture is exposed for reporting, both uh, geospatially time, as well as time series data to give you strong insights into um, to, um, how you're operating, how you're performing. And of course, we can, we can schedule reports to go out on, uh, on, a, on a periodic basis. You can, you can schedule um, you know, alerts based on the data you need to, um, that, that you're interested in learning about if, if something happens, if an event happens. You can select multiple data sources, select your time period, select your template, but ultimately you wanna build a, a, uh, a very pleasing and insightful report that gives you the data that helps you uh, helps you improve your business. Now, that, that's that's the basic you know, kind of that's reporting and dashboarding visualization kind of 101. If you want to move forward and do more advanced things, now we're talking about doing very advanced uh, analytics based on time series data. This could be extremely large data sets that we're analyzing to really pull out um, based on uh, all the historical data, pull out the exceptions and the patterns, the trends, and then use this to start doing predictive things or predictive maintenance for your enterprise asset intelligence. Now we're really giving the data a lot of context by combining real-time uh, performance data, real-time diagnostic and health data, combining that with historical work order information, and uh, then doing some predictive analytics in terms of uh, predicting out what potential high probability for failures, okay, to forecast that out at uh, many different levels in your hierarchy. So now we're talking about much more um, complex uh, items. Now, you know, and then, um, you, know, you know, having that data for the things that you have to report on. So we have many customers that uh, have state and federal reporting uh, requirements that have been historically manual. Uh, now with this, these tools and uh, leveraging the IoT, we can, we can pull that data and generate these types of reports in a very effective and fast fashion um, to automate many processes that were very, very time consuming and inaccurate. Now, just to give you an idea, I just wanna kinda just uh, kinda give you an idea. So in this particular case, we now are looking at, just, you know, this is the user interface to the platform. So we have administration tools, you know, visualization tools, field service management, reporting, and, and advanced analytics. And now we're looking at things like, where's all my inspectors? Here's, my, here's all my inspectors out in the world. Where's all my assets that were performing yesterday? Any, um, any assets based on, um, you know, based on a location? Sorry. <clears throat> um, right. Do this again. So, if we look, okay. So, where are my inspectors? Where are my code enforcement officers? Where's my equipment? Here's my smart containers. Here's my uh, any equipment that has supports the AMP uh, standard. All my vehicles. So, show me any underutilized vehicles. Any assets at the Dover job site? Uh, any vehicles in Ohio, Georgia job sites? So now we're going to get different types. Now we're looking at only data within a defined geographic space with all the data that we need to understand and analyze very, very effectively. So now to give this context, just as an example, you know, what if 
what if we want to know how the weather is going to impact us tomorrow? Okay, so now we're looking at, now we're getting uh, real-time data context when weather, both historical as well as uh, forecasted weather, to understand what's going on out, out in the world. Um, so very simple to use, very easy to use, and um, gives a ton of power, a, a ton of uh, capabilities to really understand what's, what's going on with the things out in the world. So I'm kind of wrapping up, Dan. Um, that's kind of the, the kind of the key topics I want, we want to discuss. I just want to wrap up with saying, you know, uh, you know, the path to digital transformation and uh, implementing IoT strategy. And whether you call it IoT or whether you call it, you know, you know fleet management or asset management or real-time systems, it's all under the same umbrella. It's connecting to the things that you own and operate out in the world, vehicles, equipment, machines, uh, and your mobile workforce, capturing that data, bringing it back, transforming it, uh, processing it, putting rules on it, generating actions to resolve the issue, and then providing a platform to analyze that data, both historically and predictively, um, is what, what we see as the, a, a way to assist in the digital transformation process and apply the industrial IoT to real world business problems that, that, that can be solved and generate substantial uh, ROI. Uh, almost on day one, your ROI is uh, being, being, being achieved. So uh, that's why I, I, I wanna leave everyone with that. I'm gonna turn it back over to Dan and uh, um, to, to wrap up. Yeah, thanks, Tim. And uh, we, we do have a couple questions that uh, that came up uh, during our session today. So just wanted to, um, uh, we have a couple minutes left here. So um, we're going to get to as many of those as possible. And then we'll, we'll definitely follow up if uh, we can't get to a certain question. Um, the first question is, could you talk a little bit about the scalability of the IAOT platform? And um, really, in particular, how ThinkTech ha has thought about um, architecting towards scalability for the future? Uh, that's a great question. So well, the first thing we, 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 we built or we architected and designed um, um, this application and this platform um, with scalability in mind. So what does that mean? And uh, uh, I'm going to have to get a little bit, little bit technical, but it, it deserves a technical uh, response. But So we're using things like a NoSQL database, which is designed very specifically for extremely large database databases and high transaction um, um, data requirements so between the, the 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 database that we've chosen to leverage um, and actually leverage two different types of databases one for the processing and the transactional processing and one for the the serving up or uh, serving up of the data um, so between the, the the two databases that we've chosen to um, to build our application on, which are again designed for extremely large data sets, gives us the ability to really transact and process millions and millions and millions of records on a minute uh, per minute with no degradation and no performance impacts because that's what they're designed to do. They're, they're very difficult to it's very difficult to man manage and maintain on the technical side, but it's designed specifically for high transactions. Combine that with our our, our, our middleware that we've built, that's um, our API services and our transactional services, as well as our rules engine. Um, those also are designed to be to process data very very uh, very, very fast. Um, so we're leveraging, and we are leveraging some microservices that uh, allow us to process that data. That we can go out to whether it's AWS, Lambda function um, um, to actually process that data in, what, in what's called a serverless environment. So um, between the, the big data, the high transaction databases that we're, we're using and the serverless environment that we use to, 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 to make functions on top, top of that data allows us to really scale up the data from a, um, from a big data and predictive data perspective. Great, thank you, Tim. Another question that came in was, um, how flexible is uh, your IoT platform in respect to future unknowns? So obviously, there's a lot of change uh, uh, from communication protocols to different types of devices uh, out in the world right now. Uh, 
how does ThinkTech think about that? And, um, and what do you, uh, what do you kind of um, uh, think about from a future unknowns perspective and in preparing for that? Uh, good question. So uh, the, the first piece is that what we, from a, from a platform perspective, we built our API server on uh, known, published, and understood protocols. So, uh, so for instance, between SAE, uh, your I, uh, ISO uh, protocols for equipment, which is the AMP standard, uh, whether it's the OBD2 standards published again by SAE, um, there's uh, uh, J1939, J1708 standards for heavy equipment and um, other machines. There's um, uh, for for real machines like uh, manufacturing machines or P um, refrigeration units. There's standards for uh, this OPC UA, the unified architecture, support that. And say let's talk about MQTT uh, for sensors. That's now MQTT is now the ISO standard for uh, sensors and um, um, other uh, well for sensors. So as long as we can support these protocols, we can support hundreds if not thousands of different quote unquote asset classes. Now, what's happening, what we're also seeing is there's the data, is how do you capture the data? That's one. So we're, we've architected to be very standards compliant. Now, the second piece is how do you get that data off of, off of the device or the, the, the thing? Now we're going to have to shift to communication um, uh, protocols. So uh, from a communication protocol, um, we support devices and sensors, machines that support, of course, like a cellular or SIM, uh, a SIM card connection, a 3G or 4G, um, uh, 4G SIM, um, cellular connection. Well, what if cellular is not the proper method? What if we want to uh, uh, use a radio frequency or RFID or Bluetooth to capture data? Uh, we need to be able to support that from a communication perspective and a protocol perspective. Um, as we start moving out and um, as the proliferation of low-powered wide area networks become uh, pervasive, such as uh, Zigbee and Sigfox, of course, are kind of the, uh, the, the ones that are known, um, we have to support those. Uh, now, when I say we, um, the, the hardware manufacturers or the gateways or the devices that we implement and we source and implement, they have to support that communication module. So uh, we work with our partners to make sure that the proper communication module is in place to support um, uh, to support um, you know, various different com com communication, communication methods. As an example, we have one uh, gateway that supports all major communication methods, 3G, 4G, the impending 5G, uh, narrowband IoT, CAT-M, which is a, you know, a cellular, uh, private cellular network, um, and you know, that, that can support any one of those communication modules. That, so the, the, the hardware vendors are giving us a lot of flexibility in terms of communication protocols. As long as we support, support the communication protocols, they can send that data back to us, to our, to our VPN and to our um, wireless gateway server. Awesome, Tim. Um, so uh, last question, and uh, then we'll, we'll go ahead and wrap up. But um, talk about uh, what organizations should be thinking about if they are planning their own IoT initiatives. Um, what, what type of uh, what type of data or um, what type of things would you bring to the table if you're kicking off an IoT initiative within your own organization? What should we be thinking about before um, kind of reaching out to, to have a conversation? Well, you know, I think uh, you know, I, I, the, you know, business, you know, what are the business drivers? You know, what's driving the decision to transform or to um, to want to implement a real-time connected device, quote unquote, IoT uh, solution. You know, what are the core business drivers? Who are the core? Who are the key stakeholders? Because you know, the in industry 4.0. Um, you know, if you if you read the articles out, out in the world, you know, a, a big piece of um, the discussion revolves around you know blending operations into the IT world and creating an operational framework of, you know, kind of a decision frame, uh, framework between and blending IT with operations so that um, the technical piece, you know, the technical deployment solves the business or the operational problems. That's often an area that we get, we get 
in the middle of, I would say, but having, you know, those, the operational stakeholders, the IT stakeholders, the business units, um, all in the same room to discuss kind of what's the, the, the vision and the plans to move forward with this type of deployment and what's the phases of the, that plan. So, um, you know, you know, this entire process to transform, um, you know, go through a digital transformation process for uh, uh, any business could be, you know, years as you phase that in. So I think the phasing, you know, you know phasing of the high priority and lo- the high priority low hanging fruit, things that you can do quickly to get a win that, that generates a lot of value is always a, a a recommendation we make to our customers because that can allow you to continue that path if you can get some wins early quickly so for instance for, you know, when we deploy our system we kind of discuss it as a plug-and-play system so it's just a matter of us connecting to the equipment or machine plugging in the device or installing the device or connecting to an existing uh, OEM API and now you're really in a very short order in a very short amount of time you you could have a very successful win for your organization that will then fuel the maybe more complex things that you want to do down the line. So, you know, obviously the, the business requirements, the phases, the plans, and the stakeholder engagement, getting them aligned um, around this operational framework is really an important process. And um, we often help our customers move down that path. We normally uh, sit on the technical side in terms of helping design and recommend uh, devices, sensors, machines, and um, uh, communication uh, uh, infrastructure. And then um, and kind of designing the most effective uh, uh, solution and, and then and, and providing the, the, our framework for uh, the, the, the decision makers or the, the business unit uh, owners, um, how that data can be applied to their business to make better decisions. The end of it, and a lot of times people walk backwards from that process, which is, you know, which is which I actually like is, you know, what are your what are your key performance indicators? What's your performance metrics? What's your benchmarks that you need to you need to achieve? If you, def- if you can define those and back out of it, you can often get to what are the the highest priority uh, initiatives, the highest priority assets, the highest priority equipment, whatever that may be, and then scale up to that as you move forward. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Tim. Uh, appreciate your time today. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for today's webinar. Again, just to quickly recap, today's discussion was really focused on, on how uh, organizations can really start to leverage the industrial IoT to really drive digital transformation within their own organizations. Um, we went through a lot of stuff today, so certainly um, take an opportunity to, uh, over the next couple of days, as we send out the recording of this session, uh, digest that information. If there are additional questions, we'd be more than happy to uh, have a conversation with you and uh, certainly want to help you on your uh, digital transformation um, initiatives as well. Uh, so simply visit us at www.thingtech.com. Um, either select contact us or request the demo and we'll be happy to jump on a quick call with one of our uh, industrial IoT experts to help you uh, through that process. Um, in the meantime, uh, again, want to thank you for all for your time. Uh, thank you, Tim. Um, and uh, we will see you on the next go round. So thanks so much.